Marriage may be an advantage I'm willing to do without. I wish to be free and to decide for myself who I might live with. Someone like you, Jude, or someone else. You seek to mold your life for yourself, so why should I not demand the same? We come together, here we go Around the fire, here we go Aiming higher, here we go To my surprise, a fever grows. We both began in innocence No, it's, it's the weight is the thing Leave him here for wood, firewood, Mr. Phillipson. Oh, I, I could make use of him, or sell him in parts. I'd regret that, John. It's a good piano, and I'll have need of music at Christminster. My aunt has a fuel house, sir, and it might be put in there until you found a place to settle in. Jude Forley, you are ever fast of thought. Now, as you're here, just help me load these onto the cart. I will, sir. I hope you'll be happy where you're going, sir. Here you are. A book to remember me by. Why do you go, sir? Well, you know what a university is, and a university degree? No. A degree is the necessary mark of learning to progress as I wish. My dream is to be a university graduate, and then to be ordained as a minister. Going to live at Christminster will give me a better chance of that. What is Christminster? Well, you must know it. It's the shining city across the hills, northwards. You can see it from the top of Brown House Down. Hmm. Now, I shan't forget you, Jude. Be a good boy and remember to be kind to birds and read all you can. And if you ever come to Christminster, hunt me out for old time's sake. Goodbye, Mr. Phillipson. Jude! Jude! Come along and help me draw the water now. Yes, Aunt. Good day, Mrs. Edlin. Oh, Miss Foley. He have gone, then? The schoolmaster. Mm, he have, Mrs. Edlin. Considered himself above a little sleepy place like Mary Green. Hm. Here, draw up that water, will you, you young harlequin? And who's this one? <laughs> ah, this is my great nephew, Jude. Jude, say hello. 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 He come from Melstock since she was last this way, where his father was living and was took ill and died in two days. I've got him there to stay with me till we can see what's to be done with him. Just now he's the scaring of birds for Farmer Trouton to earn a penny. Oh, well, he'll keep you company in your loneliness. And I'll bear it with the bacon. Oh, we shall see if he's good for the like or not. He is crazy for books. I like to read, but I'm not crazy. Oh, he'll answer back, will he? <laughs> he will. It runs in our family, rather. His cousin Sue was the same. Oh, I recall her. Oh, she was like a child of my own. Lived here with her parents. Until their marriage broke. Oh, that little maid should know such changes. Well, divorce is the modern way in the cities, I hear. Jude, my child, don't you ever marry. It isn't for the Forleys to take that step anymore. Why not? <laughs> Never you mind, just do as I say. I will do what I please. Oh, 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 oh. you think so? <laughs> Well, you'll carry that water back and get a breakfast cake and then get to Troutham's fields before the morning's gone and his corn with it. Away, 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 away! You shall have some breakfast, poor things. Yes, that's it. Eat dear birdies. <coughs> so it's eat dear birdies, is it, young man? I'll tickle your britches and see if you say that again in a hurry. then, won't I? <laughs> That's a lesson for you. And there's your sixpence. Mind you don't come anywhere near these fields again. I needed to be kind. 
I was kind. Oh, and do you expect me to keep you out of kindness? <laughs> if you can't scare birds, what can you do? <laughs> oh, go oh, there, there. Don't look so deedy. Now, get out from under my feet for the rest of the day. Don't get up to mischief. Go on. Hey, come here. Over yeah, the Mark. side. I'll, I'll water him now. Oh, well, my lad. What may you want up here? I'm looking to know where the city of Christminster is. Christminster? You can see out yonder, in the distance, by that clump. Not today. The time I've noticed it best is when the sun's going down in a blaze of flame. And it looks like... Oh, I don't know what. The... the heavenly Jerusalem? <laughs> aye, aye. Though I should never have thought of it myself. Oh, oh you're a reader, eh? I am. As much as I am anything. Oh, you'd have to get your head screwed on the other way before you could read what they read in Christminster. Why? Oh, they never look at anything folk like we can understand. Only foreign tongues. News before the flood. But no two families spoke alike. They read that sort of thing as fast as a night hawk will work. Tis all learning there. Uh, nothing but. Come on, let's get them moving again. Come on. Got it. That's it. Oh, we've a young follower now. <laughs> we might find you work if you want some. No, oh, thank you. I'm a scholar. Oh, scholar, is it? Yes, and I shall go to Christminster someday. Now, we be heading along the ridgeway with this load, so we'll bid you farewell, young scholar. Don't be here late and lost in the way, oh mind. I'll set off home directly. But I'll see Christminster first. And the mist cleared, and you saw Christminster. Its roofs and towers and domes and spires. It seemed like a city of light to you, Jude. You thought it would just suit you, if only you could get there. And as you were falling, and all we Follies are industrious and ingenious. Ooh, a parcel for a boy. At last. What is it then? Two grammars of Latin and Greek which I asked Mr. Phillotson to send me, and which I shall read and know, and from them I shall become a scholar. Oh, well, and good luck. And I shall be going to London to set with the Queen. Amare to love. Mo... Mas... Mas... There is no... This can't... All of the words are different. I'll have to learn every single one. And it will take years and years and years. I'm sad that no one came along to lift that boy's mood and tell him how well he thought. No one did because no one ever does. But that boy's determination grew with every passing year. I'll be taking the lower path towards Mary Green. You'll be back for work on Monday, Jude? I will. You have a good hand and eye for the work. I can see you making a stonemason. I have a deal to learn, though. And I must save money, and I will, and one of those Christminster colleges will open its doors to me if I wait 20 years for the welcome. <laughs> well, I'll see you on Monday, daydreamer. I shall make my dreams realities. God's grace to you, Michael. Italian fato profugus laui de Litera multi. Hoi <laughs> Thank you. I didn't throw oh. it, nor I. <laughs> oh, Annie, how could you? You didn't do it, oh no. What? So how, how did a pig's pizzle come to fly <laughs> through the air and hit a poor stonemason who is learning peaceful in the sun? It's wasteful of another's property. <laughs> oh, that's nothing. The pig's my father's. But you'll want his pizzle back, I suppose. <laughs> Shall I throw it across the stream? Or will you come to the plank here? Don't throw it. Give it to me. I'll pass it on the end of my walking stick. I don't think you'll want me touching it. Pass it here. You don't think I threw it. Oh, no. 
Father will want it for making into dubbing. Don't tell folk it was I, mind. Now can I? Don't even know your name. I'm Arabella Don. My father's a pig breeder, and these girls are helping me wash the innards for black pudding. You, well, you look fine in the middle of such things. <laughs> you should see us Sundays. I don't suppose I could. That's for you to think on. There's nobody after me now. There might be in a week or two. <laughs> Tomorrow's Sunday. Shall I call? All right. My name's Jude Forley, and I'll call. Tomorrow. You might. Mm. <laughs> Catch them, my dear? <laughs> I don't know. I wish I'd thrown something other than that, though. <laughs> Arabella, oh Arabella, just a moment's fun. We'll hear your name again, won't we? <sighs> so, Griesbach's New Testament. But something else had your attention. Hmm. The unvoiced call of woman to man. Well, I could afford one afternoon. It's a fair old spread to see up here. I think it's all of England. In the distance is Christminster, where the scholars live. And there's Alfredston, and across there, Shotsford. Oh, then I shall know where they be if I need them. <laughs> now, we are well together, dear, aren't we? Yes, mildly enough. I was thinking myself fast. <laughs> We love this, then. No. Aren't we? Maybe. How might we know? You might kiss me. And I might like you to. I might. <laughs> I do think I've got him to care for me. But I want him to more than care. If he is a romance and straightforward, honest chap, he's to be had, and as a husband, if you go about it the right way. <laughs> and what way might that be? Other than by playing courting and making sure he don't go too far. <laughs> she don't know. She don't. And her have lived in a town. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, we can teach you something. I didn't think of that. <laughs> now come in. They've gone to church. Do you want some tea? I'd rather sit and talk. On the couch, then. On the couch? Well? Yes? Uh, now, don't touch me, please, for I'm part eggshell. You are? Perhaps I'd better put it in a safe place. What is it? A bantam's egg. I carry it about everywhere with me, and it'll get hatched soon. Where'd you carry it? Just here. Oh. Now, mind you, don't come near me. Well, that's very awkward for me just now. <laughs> Serves you right. There. My hand's all you can have of me. That's rather mean. You should have catched me a minute ago when I put the egg down. There. I'm without it now. Well, I... Uh, no. I'm with it again. Well, I'll rescue it. <laughs> <laughs> One kiss, now I can do it without damage to property. You must find me first. All right, I'll find you, come on. <laughs> but Jude prospects, prospects. Drusilla has always wanted to dwell on prospects. 
You're just another of the fatted pigs her father brings up to profit from. Aunt, my plans will change, but they aren't over and you should be happy for me. We'll be in Christminster soon. Uh, how? You're an apprentice on half wages to work out your time. She will have no use for you in a town. We won't be in a town. I'm taking a cottage between the Brown House and Mary Green, and I'll have a vegetable garden, and Arabella uh, shall have a pig. Uh, and how might you pay for that? Well, I, I wondered if I might borrow a little. Oh, you were as foolish as any foily. Marriage and a pregnancy wrecks all you plan for. Just a little to borrow, Aunt. Oh. It'll keep us from needing a room here on the wedding night. My love? My love? What? You come into bed? Shortly. What's that? My hairpiece. It's not your own? Oh, no. I picked it up for a fancy when I was a barmaid at Altbrickham. Barmaid? Well, I used to draw the drink at a public house there for a little time. You'll soon have plenty to do now, dear, won't you? How do you mean? Little things to make. Oh. When will it be? Can't you tell me exactly yet? Tell you what? The date. There's nothing to tell. What? <laughs> it was a mistake. I made a mistake. How can that be? People fancy wrong things sometimes. Good God, I... Uh, I, I wouldn't have hurried this on and brought you to a half-finished hut if it hadn't been for the news you give me, which made me want to save you. <laughs> save me? Now don't take on. What's done can't be undone. Married is married. It will have its pleasures, my dear. There must be something wrong, Jude, in a social ritual which demands the end of well-planned schemes. A ritual required because of one moment of instinct, or at worst, weakness. But you and Arabella may have been caught in its gin trap for the rest of your days. The snow's not enough to hinder him, surely. If the slaughterman's not coming, we must put it off. It's only the water bowl for nothing. Mm, can't be put off. The pig ate the last mixing of barley meal yesterday morning. What's he lived on since? Nothing. He's been starving. Yes. We always do it the last day or two to save bother with the innards. What ignorance not to know that. Well, that accounts for his crying so. Poor creature. Oh, there's no help for it. You must do the sticking. Or I'll do it myself. I think I could. No, no, I'll do it. Since it must be done. Come on. Come on. Come on. Rope his feet together. No, not like that. Pull it tighter. <sighs> Creature I fed with my own hands. Here, there's the knife. Now, whatever you do, don't stick him too deep. I'll do it is to make short work of it. No, the meat needs to be well bled, and to do that, he must die slow. Just touch the vein, that's all. He ought to be eight or ten minutes dying at least. He'll not be half a minute if I can help it. Oh, oh damn it all, you've overstuck him. And I'm telling you all the time. I'll have a little pity on the creature. No, no. Make him stop that. It'll bring somebody up here, and I don't want people to know we're doing it ourselves. Oh, give it here. That's better. It's an horrible business. Uh, pigs must be killed. There, look. Look now. Now he'll go. I can't stand it. <laughs> oh. Oh, you've kicked it all over. Now I can't make any black part. There's a waste all through you. Thank God he's dead. 
What's God got to do with it? Poor folks must live. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Well, tis all one. The stain will melt away. You're late. I visited my aunt. And ate there. While I melt the lard from the pig fat and make the food for you, you wander home and you're fed already. I needed to see her. You need to earn more if you're wasting food like that. And you need to earn more anyway. An apprentice's wages aren't meant to be enough to keep a wife on. Then you shouldn't have had one. You know how that came about? Oh, I'll declare before heaven that I thought what I told you was true. And you enjoyed yourself. It was the weakness of a moment with a lifelong penalty attached. <laughs> That's the story about me and Mary oh. Green, is it? That I entrapped you? Much of a catch you were, Lord Send. I won't have them books here in the way. Leave them alone. You've covered them in grease. Oh! Gonna ill-use me, are you? Like your father and your aunt did. What do you know of me and mine? Go and ask your precious aunt! Oh, she's a fool to open that up. To open what? And how may it be that everyone here knows? Oh, Jude, it's such as everyone gossips on. Your father and mother couldn't get on together and they parted. It was coming home from Alfredston Market when you were a baby on the hill by the Brown House barn that they had their last difference and took leave of one another. What of my mother then? Oh, well, she soon afterwards died. She drowned herself, sad to tell, and your father went away with you to South Wessex and never came here any more. You didn't speak of her, nor of here. It was all over with him. Same story with your aunt. Her husband defended her, so she went away to London with her little daughter, and that was that. Never came here again. I didn't know. I told you long and often the Forleys are not made for wedlock. Hey, what are you doing? Looking at your pictures, don't think I've minded them before. Who's that? Well, that's your father. That's him. The man who made me. Mm, worse luck for you. But you keep his picture. Only as a record. I'm not sentimental. <laughs> I've got his hair. And who's this? She's very pretty. That's the little maid, your cousin Sue, Sue Brided. Where's she now? She lives in Christminster, I believe. Can I have this picture? Why would you want it? Well, when I get to Christminster, I might look for her. Oh, you will not. She's some sort of artist or designer in some kind of ecclesiastical warehouse, which, if you ask me, sounds like a perfect seedbed of idolatry. Is that why you fear for me? She might be a papist. <laughs> She'd be more lost than that. Arabella! Arabella! I've gone to my friends. Shall not return. I've grown tired of you. There is no prospect of you bettering yourself, or me. As you know, my parents have for some time considered emigration to Australia, and I may go with them, if you don't object. I've been fond of you, after a fashion. That might be the best for both of us. So you came looking for me, and I not even knowing you existed on this earth. Sue? Oh, yes, Miss Vontover? There are customers. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the new books of illustration. They are for the devout to study after purchase, not for us to be distracted by. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll come to the counter at once. Yes, young man. I, um... Yes? I... <clears throat> I'm admiring the work. It is a saintly business. Yes, and Susanna here is our best hand. 
I'm a stonemason, you see. And I revere craft. But you are not here to gaze at those that pursue it, I imagine. No, no. No, I... I need gold leaf for statuary. Uh, let me fetch it. And I never knew that man was you. You've been sitting a long time on that plinth stone, young man. Well, Constable, I'm a stonemason. I can run my fingers over a moulding and feel its age. And I'm a wanderer too in these college shadows. <laughs> and here live the ghosts of all those who I have read, Hobbes and Locke and, and, and Benson and Wesley and Newman and Gladstone and Peel. Where have you come from, son? Mary Green, over the Downs. Have you lodgings? I have. Though I've also read as much as a man such as I might read, and I'll demand entrance to speak with them and their kind, and to match the mind of this ordinary man with theirs. Is that so? Only a wall divides me from men who've nothing to do morning till night but read, mark, and inwardly digest. Ah, uh, what a wall. Put there for a purpose. More reason for me to scale it. I think you've drink taken. Now it's time you were moving along to your home and your bed. Images, statues, castware. Good morning. Oh, good morning, miss. Ancient marbles, copied to the very detail. You see this, Apollo? I see, yes. The Bacchus. And Mars here, Venus. Yes, of the standard pattern, the, the Mazarin. Uh, how much are these two? The largest, uh, ten shillings a piece. I can't afford that. I can give you eight and six. They're yours, here. I hope they bring you pleasure. Apollo and Venus. <laughs> Oh, here, wrap them in burdock leaves. That will help mm. to conceal them also. They're, they're a little... Yes, uh, yes. And now I must get them home. So you came to the shop and you knew who I was, but you didn't say. I should have, <laughs> I, as I've no other friends here. <laughs> Our aunt told me you were here. She made you sound quite a mystery. Really? Only because she'd lost touch with you. She was kind to me as a child, in her way. I've one very old friend here somewhere, but I, I don't quite like to call on him yet. I wonder if you know anything of him? Oh, it being such a small place, Christminster, almost a village. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a village boy. What's his name? Phillotson. He's a parson, I think. I do know of a Phillotson. He lives a little way out in the country. A schoolmaster? Surely not still. His Christian name's Richard. Yes, I've directed books to him. And he couldn't do it. What? Oh, he had ambitions to take a degree, like me. Well, we could go and call on him. It's not late. Oh, we could. It's two miles or so from here. And, and perhaps we will learn a little more of each other on the journey. Hmm. You were one of my pupils? Yes. It was out at Mary Green, yes, dude? Yes. I was there for a short time. Uh, and you're an old pupil too? No, I'm Jude's cousin. We've just met. Yes. Long lost relatives. <laughs> Now, Mr. Phillotson, I wrote to you for some grammars. If you remember, I, I put a note in your piano and you sent them to me. Ah, yes. I, I do dimly recall that. You said your scheme was to take a degree. Well, I wonder I didn't keep my own counsel. That idea was given up years ago. Well, I've never forgotten it. I try to. That's what brought me to this part of the country. Well, perhaps you'd both like some tea. Thank you. Yes. Well, come in. Been good to meet. Yes, although you find me in for some upheaval. Why? I have to leave my job. 
What's the matter? Ah, oh, the owner's offended with me and me with her, so it's best that I go. You don't seem offensive to me. <laughs> oh, she broke some statuettes of mine. I lodged with her. She found them in my room, and though it was my property, she threw them on the floor and stamped on them because they weren't to her taste. And then she ground the arms and the head of one of the figures all to bits with her heel. That is extreme. No <laughs> doubt she called them papal images. I think it was that they were pagan. Nudes. Oh. <laughs> well, well, why not try teaching? I could ask Mr. Phillotson to let you try your hand. Perhaps he seems kind. Now I should go in. Jude, I am so glad we've met at last. We won't fall out just because our parents did, will we? No, we won't. Hmm. And if you study nearby, we needn't be thrown apart quite so quickly. That'd be a good thing. Yes, thank you, Jude. Please, ask your friend. Gather round, children. Now, this mound outside the city wall is Calvary, the spot on which our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. How could they know what Jerusalem looked like? It's based on best evidence and theory. It's not even as though Jerusalem is the most worthy of study. What about Athens or Rome? Please keep those opinions away from your class, Susanna. Hmm. Look, there's your cousin Jude. Oh, I didn't see him. Jude! Oh, Sue. Hello. Mr. Phillotson. You're studying the model very intently. Yes. It's, it's a wonderful exhibition. Hmm. A revelation to me. We're here with our school children. Of course. Though they seem unimpressed. <laughs> I could study it for hours. But I'm in the middle of a job near here. Now, my dear, we should round up our charges. Mm. Jude, you must walk out to the village one Friday evening. Oh, yes, you must, Jude. I'd be pleased to. Children, gather in a line now at the door. She is a great asset, and the best assistant teacher I've ever had. I'm glad to hear it. We'll see you soon, Jude. Visit us in our habitat. Yes. Goodbye. Oh, Sue. He's too old for you. I didn't see then how you saw me, Jude. I didn't see. Oh, don't you be a fool about her, Jude Foley. No, no, of course not. Oh, just don't you go being sweet on her. I'm not. If that's what is stirring you up so, then I say beware. It's not, Aunt. I've had a letter. Oh, from who? Only the master of Biblio College. I wrote to him on my prospects. Listen now. To Mr. J. Forley, Stonecutter. Sir, I have read your letter with interest. And judging from your description of yourself as a working man, I venture to think that you will have a much better chance of success in life by remaining in your own sphere and sticking to your trade than by adopting any other course. That, therefore, is what I advise you to do. Well, I say, let that be an end to it. Yeah, well, I, I, I lodge near his college. I shall have my say in return. Know your place in all things and stay in it. I've got my own path to walk. Aunt. I don't care for any provost, warden, or master of the arts in the university. Stay now, Farley. Why? I'd lick them on their own ground if they'd give me a chance and show them a few things they're not up to yet. And you, you aim at the church, you say? I do. What, you say the creed in Latin, can you? With ease. <laughs> With ease, he says. Hear it. Credo in unum Deum, Patrem Omnipotentum. That's the nice scene. We want the apostles. Which one of you pack of fools knows whether I've said it or no? Oh. Might have been the rat hatch's daughter in double Dutch for all that your drunken heads can tell. Oh, no, 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 no. No. I'll be rid of the lot of you. Oh, we're oh, 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 you. Oh, 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 oh. Go put your gown on. Go on. I have understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you, yea, who knoweth not such things as these. 
Job 12, 3. Oh, you'll have the constables on you. You shan't catch me, should you try? Sue! Sue! Jude? What are you doing? Sue, I... I'm in need. You're in need? And drink, more like. Wait a moment. Oh, come in. Please, dear Jude. Whatever is wrong? I am. And I am in drink. You shouldn't see me. But of course I should. Oh. Over all those years, I dreamed my dream of Christminster, and now it's at an end, and that's what's brought me here to you, tapping on your window at night. I'm sorry, Sue. Don't be. I've crashed, and my self-deception's at an end. I don't know what to do now. But Phillipson passed through the same disappointment, but now he embraces consolation. What consolation? You're talking in drunken riddles, Jude. Well, yeah. You're right. The dream will not die. But I must apply myself again. And find consolation where I will. Stay, Jude. And sleep in this room and I'll come down early and give you breakfast. I'm shortly for the teaching college at Melchester. Melchester? Yes. It's at Mr. Phillotson's suggestion. To advance my training. If you wish, you could speak to him in the morning in the school. No. No, no. I'll slip away and make my new resolutions. You could visit me at Melchester. We might take a Sunday. Yes. Sweet Sue. Mm. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> I'd like that. Good night, Jude. And be happy. Oh, Jude. How did I not see? I moved to the training college, and you somehow contrived to find an occasion to visit me there. Melchester Cathedral is so vast, and the necessary work so prodigious, that it draws craftsmen from across the county. So you're looking for work there? Perhaps. Huh. Christminster has had enough of me, and my sobriety needs a new occupation. Well, I'd be happy to have you so near. It's been a trying time. The college is grim. I feel as miserable as I've ever been. Have you enjoyed this day out? Oh, yes. Very much. Any adventure that means a day's freedom. But I'll be independent after two years' training, and Richard said he'd use his influence to get me a big school. That sounds like a success. Yes. I, I had a suspicion. That I'd be a success? No, no. Oh, oh, thank you, Jude. Oh, no, that's, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I meant... I had a feeling that Phillipson cared about you. Oh, oh, now, don't be so silly. I know what I saw him doing. Not kissing me, that I'm certain. Putting his arm around your waist at that exhibition. I didn't know he was going to. So is that what you meant by consolation, Jude, when I saw you last? Yes, it is. I see. Then you will be angry when I tell you everything. Like what? I've promised that I'll marry him when I finish training school. I see. He's planning that we'll then take a large school, and we'll make a good income between us. You couldn't have done better. Oh, Jude, you are angry. But you don't know how bad I am, or you wouldn't care whether I was engaged or not. I'm my own man, with my own thoughts. Oh. Oh, how far do we have to go now? A fair ways. But we have to press on. The trains don't run late. Oh, this isn't right. We've lost our way and there's no one around to ask. Oh, I'll have to be back on time or the college will punish me. No, I can see a sheepfold on the edge of that wood. There'll be a shepherd there. Come on.
Well, you'll never do it in this world. It's not so late, is it? Well, the light'll be gone soon, though. I don't mind going with you some of the way, but the train may well be gone, too. Or y you can bide here, you know, uh, over the night. Might we? Well, um, are you a married couple? No, we're relations. Then she can go into Mother's room, and you and I can lie in the outer chimney after they've gone through. I can call you soon enough to catch the first train back. Young lady, you may room in with my mother. Oh, very well. Thank you. And you might share our boiled bacon and greens for our supper. It's only such fare as we has and not fancy, but you're welcome. Oh, it's a beautiful clear morning now. We'll be back at the college in no time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Four miles is all the walk was. Hmm. We might have made it last evening. Well, I relished our freedom. Out in the fields, beyond the rules and habits. I'm not so sure. I think you're quite a product of this town civilization. I'm not. I like reading and ideas. But I love to get back to the country, the freedoms of childhood. I'm not sure you've anything unconventional at all about you. Well, you don't know what's inside me. What? What's wrong? There's a teacher waiting at the door. Back to the prison of my life. We must face up. Go and demand entry. Yes, I will. So I went back to the college, and then I surprised you, I think, to your soul. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon me. Jude! Sue? Yes. Can I come out without being seen? Yes. Don't come down, just shut the window. Oh. Oh. oh, I'm so cold. Can I come by your fire, Jude? Oh. You're soaking wet. Oh, Jude, they locked me up for being out with you. It seems so unfair that I couldn't bear it. So I got out the window and escaped through the river. Huh. Oh. You must change out your things. Oh. And borrow some from the landlady. I'll no. ask. Oh, no, no, don't, don't let her know, for God's sake. Well, then put on mine. My Sunday suit. And a cloth to dry yourself. Quickly, we must get you dry. Oh. I'll wait in my room. And have the door closed. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Jude. How long shall I give you? Just a moment. Oh, I feel rather ill and feverish. Oh. Your landlady must not know. Why? We're so near the school, they'll come after me. Oh. There. I'm done. <laughs> what? You look like a boy. <sighs> with your hair all spiked from drying. Thank you. <laughs> Can we dry my clothes now? Sit in my chair. <laughs> I'll stoke up the fire and they can hang above it to dry. <sighs> Here. Oh, no. Uh, let me arrange them. No. Oh. Oh, yes. Mrs. Payne had better not see these. <laughs> it's odd that you should see me like this. All my things hanging there. It's only women's clothes. Oh, sexless cloth and linen. Once they're dry, I'll get a lodging. It's not late yet. Not if you're ill. You'll stay here. Where? We'll sort something out. 
Oh. I wish I could get warm. Put my great coat on. There. Oh. And here. Six the best brandy. Now drink it. All of it. Uh, you're drinking? No. No, I, I, I keep it to prove myself indifferent to it. Mm. So nice to be here. I feel safe and at home. You are. You uh, called me a creature of civilization yesterday. And you're dwelling on that? Hmm. It was an odd thing to say. Why? Well, for one thing, because it was wrong. Do I seem educated to you? You don't talk quite like a girl. <laughs> well, one who's not had advantages. I've had advantages. I don't know Latin or Greek, but I know most of the classics in translations. I've no fear of books or the men who own them. I've mixed with them, one or two in particular, almost as one of their own. Do you have something to confess? You're not yet a reverend, Jude. <laughs> well, when I was 18, I had a friendship with an undergraduate at Christminster. He'd lent me books I'd never have got hold of otherwise. Oh. Is that friendship over? Yes. Completely? Jude. He died. I see. Three years after he finished his degree. It was a tragedy. Were you very close to him? <laughs> well, we used to go about together like two men, almost. So yes, close in that way. <sighs> he also asked me to live with him once. He wanted to be my lover. Yes. But I wasn't in love with him. So I said we should live as equals, not as lovers, and if he didn't accept that, he should go away. Did he? No. He agreed to my plan, and we shared a sitting room for a year and a half. Just as we do now. Although he said I was breaking his heart holding out against him so long, he said he'd never believed it of a woman. He also said I might play that game once too often. I'm not sure I respected him again after that. But you went on together. Yes. And when he died, I was very upset. Remorseful, I suppose. He left me a little money, perhaps because I broke his heart. Do I shock you, Jude? No. So I'm no innocent, but I have never given myself to any lover. Well, I... I... People might say I'm cold-natured or sexless, but I won't have that. Some of the most passionately erotic poets have been the most self-contained in their daily lives. Have you told Phillipson about this friend? Yes, I've never made a secret of it. He just said I was everything to him, whatever I did. <sighs> You're not really cross with me, are you, Jude? I'd rather offend anyone in the world than you, I think. I don't know. Hmm. I should be saying my evening prayers, and you should sleep. You need to. I do, yes. Good night, Jude. 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 What? I've dressed and I've hung up your suit again. I'll have some coffee and a dew bit to eat with it. Oh, no, the town's not awake, so I'll slip out and I'll go to the sister of one of my classmates. She has a school at Blanford. I'll stay there till this is all blown over. I'll let you know as soon as I get myself readmitted to the college. Well, let me walk with you to the station, at least. Oh, no, don't. I'll leave alone. Sue, I want to tell you something. Two things. What things? One is a warm one. And the other a cold one. Jude, I think I know one of them, and you mustn't. What? You mustn't love me. You're to like me, that's all. Oh. 
No, that's cruel. Um, if you want to love me, then do. I don't mind at all. <laughs> Goodbye, Jude. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Phillotson. Jude, good morning. I'd like to speak with you for a moment. Certainly. Please let me put some sackcloth down and sit. Thank you. Yes, well. Has she been with you? Living with you? No, no. No, she lodges with a friend's sister. From where she has written to me, and I presume to you. Had she, I wouldn't have suffered this surprise. I imagine what they say. I know what they said to me. What happened? There were events, Mr. Phillotson, and situations. A Miss Train and our staying at a shepherd's lodgings, and when the school punished Sue, she escaped and she came to my lodgings in her distress. I gave her a place to sleep. I'm her cousin, and her only kin, and I've been there. And a God-fearing friend. That is all. I take it that the suspicion which led to her exclusion is absolutely baseless. Absolutely, so help me God. Well, this is the place for such an oath. Good day, Jude. Good day. Sue. Hello, Jude. Have you not seen Mr. Phillipson today? He's been to the college. He knows. Well, he had to, soon enough. I didn't tell him that we planned to meet. Somebody has sent them reports about us. They say you and I ought to marry as soon as possible for the sake of my reputation. Well, I've told Mr. Phillipson the truth of things. Did you? No. Oh, I was so blind at first. I didn't see what you felt at all. Well, I know you don't care about me in that way, and you're right. You belong to Mr. Phillipson. And anyway, I've never told you all my history. You have? I know it. No, I tried. But I've not told you the cold thing. Which is that I was married some years since. And live with my wife and we broke apart and a good thing too. But I'm married still. Still? Yes. Oh, God, no, don't take my hand. Well, I never thought you cared for me at all. So, so being married didn't matter. Where is she? She went abroad. I've not seen her for years. You should have told me. Before you gave me the idea that you loved me, I had no idea before that moment. If I'd been married, it would be different. I don't see marriage as a sacrament, but... How were your saints in deceit with you after this? Sue, you're cutting when you want to be. But don't cry, please. What is her name? Arabella. I suppose she's a pretty woman. Pretty enough, as far as it goes. Ah, we're cousins. It's bad for cousins to marry, and you're married already. I was always told I ought not to marry. That it ends badly with us Fawleys. Who told you that? Drusilla? Yes. She's our soothsayer, is she? <laughs> well, marriage may be an advantage I'm willing to do without. I wish to be free. And to decide for myself who I might live with. Someone like you, Jude. Or someone else. If you seek to mold your life to yourself, then why should I not demand the same? We both began in innocence. Well, you must do as you see fit. Yes. <sighs> so I decide. We must be what we are. Cousins. And warm friends only. Because of all that we've told each other and all that we feel. And because you're married. And now I'm betrothed. 
I'll go back to the college and deal with the school and I'll encounter and you'll return to your work and that must be an end. Mr. Phillotson and I will marry. But I, I thought you spoke of freedom. And I will call on you for your assistance. In what? You're my only relation, Jude. And so you must give me away. In episode one of Jude the Obscure, dramatized from Thomas Hardy's novel by Graham White, Sue Brighthead was played by Kirsty Oswald, Jude Forley by Robert Ems, Phillotson by Julius De Silva, and Young Jude by Hector Bateman Harden. Arabella was Eleanor Coleman, Drusilla, Jane Slavin, Mrs. Edlin, Jessica Turner, Miss Fontover, Marilyn Nadebe, Troughton, Tony Turner, Taylor, Nicholas Murchie, and Annie, Megan McInerney. All other parts were played by David Sturziker, Joshua Riley, and Stuart Campbell. The director was Emma Harding.